The two words every student athlete wants to hear at the end of their season is national champion. And that's exactly what happened here in Cary, North Carolina for the Syracuse Orange. This little area called the house goes out, extends to the face-off dot in each wing side, and goes up to the top of the circle. When you create this house and I promise I passed coloring in first grade. We got lucky with this one, Garrett Trader being in the stands. And Garrett, what does it mean to support these other programs here at Syracuse? We already know Syracuse basketball will look differently next year with Adrian Autry taking over as the new head coach. But more news is coming in on what players are coming back and who is heading elsewhere. Bragging rights are on the line in an emotional game between Coach Smith and Coach DeRoser. When we talked to Coach DeRoser before the game, he said it's basically one of those games where his players are going to be really emotional because of the fact that Coach Smith recruited almost every single one of them. Matt, what can you tell us about that? Well, 35 tournaments for Jim Beheim, four Final Fours, one national championship in 2003. Fittingly that he's retiring 20 years after that national championship run and just a legacy that has built Syracuse. When you think of Syracuse University, you often think of Jim Beheim. This is Rayla Clemens speed being really quick with the puck. She brings it back into the middle of the ice. Block shot. See how she is the first one to this puck and she'll take it all the way back into her own defensive zone and by the time she gets into the offensive zone she's already ready for her opportunity in front of the net. First of all it was not like this when we were here earlier today. It was a nice 65 degrees sunny a little bit of wind but the, this rain came out of nowhere. Coach Jack had a conversation with Fair talking about what this team needs to do and why Fair only had four points going into the half. Deja Fair answered. Trust the team. Duke came in and handled Syracuse however they wanted to. They were shooting 54% on the floor and exactly 50% from three-point land. This is one that Syracuse fans have been looking forward to for a while. The fight in the line eye of Illinois and a QB battle that has been the talks of the town since this has been a possibility. This one would take place at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. For the Orange tonight, they were led by who else but the Asia Fair who had 14 points. On the other side for the Irish, they were led by Olivia Miles who was 11 for 15, very efficient on the floor for 23 points. I'm not a mathematician, so you got to bear with me a little bit. Some of that stuff is numbers where Lindenwood could potentially jump into that third spot, but right now it's going to be Mercyhurst versus Syracuse in the first round of the CHA playoffs, and that will be played up in Erie, Pennsylvania. I know one person who will be keeping tabs on Adam Fantilli and Gavin Brimley. It's Michigan diehard Matt Kibbe. Matt, what do you got coming up for us? Well, real quick, Adam Fantilli, 33 points in 36 games. Coming up on NCC Sports, we take a deep dive into left field and look around ahead to tonight's deciding game three of the Men's College World Series. A packed weekend in sports and an even more important Monday night baseball game. Welcome back to NCC Sports. Game three of the College World Series happens tonight between Florida and LSU. It's winner take all after the Florida offense finally got going. It was the long ball that helped them last night. The biggest fly of the night from Ty Evans, a hanging, breaking ball, and it's absolutely crushed to left field, but maybe not. It just sneaks over the wall and out for a grand slam. 7-3 was the score after the four-run home run. Moving ahead into this one, tonight's projected starters are Paul Skeens and Jack Calagone. Calhoun is 7-3 this season. He's the two-way star that absolutely has been astonishing Players and scouts alike. Paul Skeens, though, he's on three days rest. He's had over 240 pitches in just the College World Series alone. LSU needs him, though. He's their best starter that can throw the ball 102 miles per hour. He has a lot of innings pitched this year, and he's projected to potentially go number one overall. Staying on the diamond, but this time we're going to go across the pond for MLB and Europe Tour. It's the second time baseball has made the trip. London Stadium used to hosting soccer, now seeing the diamonds. Cubs already up 3-0 and it's not slowing down. Double down the line by Miguel Amaya, extends it to 4. Paul Goldschmidt, though, is the tied at 4. Splits between 1st and 2nd, and the Cardinals get the lead back, and they didn't look back. Jordan Hicks comes in and slams the door shut. And they win. The big story, though, next year, we're going to see the New York Rockin' Mets make the trip over to London to take on those pesty Phillies in a two-game set. It's the only PGA Tour stop that stops in New England, the Travelers Championship, hosted by TPC River Highlands. Big crowd on hand in Connecticut, seeing Keegan Bradley holding a six-stroke lead. And it was a great day for him. 
if I do say so, as a not avid golfer. Rory McIlroy on the 11th, though, he was a big star at this championship. On the par three, best shot of the day, right in and almost aces it. And there's Bradley, Keegan Bradley. Got a little shaky, was up by six strokes, ends up winning it by two, and he is the Travelers champion. And from one of the quietest sports to the roar of American muscle in V8, NASCAR taking the track for the Ally 400, the pole setter, Ross Chastain, setting the pace for the green flag. But on lap 147, the number 12 Ford gets spun out and into the wall, ending Ryan Blaney's race. Only a few yellows in this one, but this was the most disastrous. Ross Chastain didn't hold the pole position for the whole race, but ends up winning the thing and forces himself into the NASCAR playoffs. NASCAR, gotta love it, gotta go fast. Michael Villegas, Emily Shiroff, back over to you. History in the making. A chance for the Liverpool Warriors girls and boys basketball team to win a section championship at the same time. But what has really been the reason behind all this recent success? I'm not sure people really understand how lucky we are to have those two coaching these programs. I do. Two coaches that have truly made their impact felt both on and off the floor. Mike Wheeler is in his first year coaching at Liverpool with the girls basketball team after spending over 20 years coaching at Onondaga Community College. His goal this year has been to change the culture and he has done that by getting his team to the section championship for the first time since 2008. We talked to the girls about uh, program changers and you know they're going to be a program change uh, you know if they win a sectional title let's let's start it off on the right foot for the boys they are led by ryan blackwell who is in his eighth year at the helm bringing a unique perspective of playing for the syracuse orange inside the dome coach blackwell has some connections like su hoops that other schools don't have and it's no surprise his former teammates are now coaches with him Preston and i have a great relationship we've kept in touch throughout the years we were roommates in college uh, it, it's fun, you know, I, like I mentioned before, Alan Griffin's an assistant. He was a teammate of ours. Obviously, we played for Bayheim. Um, so to be in this area and have a success with them watching in the background is always great. Athletic director Ari Lieberman knew hiring both coaches would do more than just hang banners in the gym. You know, yes, we want to win. Yes, we want both titles. We want to win a state championship. But the impact they've had on the kids throughout the year and the growth Incredible. It's all about that culture that both coaches have created to create moments like this one. Salinger, final score, Liverpool 66, West Tennessee 53. Or this one. Liverpool 57, CNS 50. And now, for the first time in 35 years, history has been made. Both the Liverpool boys and girls teams are Section 3 champions. From Onondaga Community College, Matt Kibbe, NCC Sports.